Hey YouTube, Alex here on Inch95 channel, bringing you guys um, another quick pro player. This is the fifth one. Um, just shout outs to everyone right now because I'm kind of busy and I have guests right now about to go out to a, a party for New Year, a dinner one and then, or a lunch one and then a dinner one. This pro player, I'm going to talk about the meta itself. Sorry, it's kind of like I'm doing this on like a cherishy kind of thingy. So it's kind of hard for me to do it. Um... The meta, basically, for those of you don't, that don't know what it is, is basically the thing that people use to play with. The meta is the decks of the format, the cards being used to play them, like, there's there's Light Sworn decks, there's Black Wing decks, all these other things, um, but there's higher tier ones, and usually the meta-defining decks are the best decks that usually win or have the highest statistics of winning that format. Um, I'm going to be talking about keeping up with the meta itself. Like, currently in this meta, um, some of the top decks you see are Black Wings. They have great synergy, field presence. They can control you with their Icarus attacks, get pluses off their uh, their uh, reinforcement of the armies, which is basically Black Whirlwind. Um, they can just o suppress you and overpower you greatly. Um, I consider that, and actually Lights more Autopilot decks, I really don't care what anyone else says because they don't really take as much skill to play. Yeah, Black Wings take a little bit more than Lights Horns, like... You have to know when to Icarus, when to drop certain things, when to collute, when not to collute, when to um, overextend. Similarly with Light Swords, you have to know when to use charges or recharges before. But, I mean, after a few times you play it, you learn how the deck goes. Um, it's just drop judgment, drop Celestia, honest, you can't run me over, blow your field up, mill, get free pluses, uh, bring out those wolves, can't hit me with those Necro Gardeners in my grave, and... It's just, oh, that's the card I forgot to put. Necro Garden is in, is in the list. Oh, well. This is just a few cards I pulled out from each deck I could find. Um, it's just, these are, and then the, the, th the third top deck, I mean, I'm talking about the highest decks right now. I'm not talking about, like, lower things like, um, like, anti-meta, things like that. Um, Zombies, very good deck. You can run in different ways. You can run the Destiny Hero version with the engine. You don't have to run Divas, you can run Diva Zombies, you can run the Teleport Engine with Crabons. This deck is just so quick, um, so many pluses off of it with the Goblin Zombies, you can reuse everything with your Burials to your Mizukis. It synchros like crazy, um, and you gain so much advantage off of everything. Um, other decks that are hot um, are Chaos, um, just a fun deck. It's You can run the, t the Destiny Hero Engine again here. You don't have to, I like it better without it, but... I mean, that's personal preference. Um, it's still a good deck. Um, there's many, many different variants of it. It's almost kind of like an anti-meta deck, but then it isn't. Gladiator Beasts, they're basically dead this format, but I have seen some hot teched out decks. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm pretty sure I know that one of the first to third place winners of the contest is actually using Gladiator Beast, but a very, very fun teched out version. Um, his deck is just crazy i tested it out for myself i really liked it it's a fun deck but it works like it runs sarcos and shit in it but it's really good so yeah um there's um keeping up with the meta i want to talk about how players the pro player or the highly competitive player always runs non out of pocket stuff and that means basically running a meta deck or and that also means being prepared and when I say being prepared, I mean knowing what decks are going to be hot, like the Absolute Zero deck, but it's not going to be, you can't use it during the LA jump, but it's still going to be hot during Nats and stuff, and most likely Worlds if they don't change their list up that much. Um, with Miracle Fusions and all that other stuff. Um, I forgot to lay out an anti-meta deck here because I really didn't have, well I kind of had the space, but anti-meta decks, those are basically to counter all these decks here. But they really never win because they're against the meta. They're not the meta. You can't have a format defined by anti-meta decks. Because obviously, again, they are against it. Like, anti-metas, they run oppressions, all that stuff. But these decks, if they rip a heavy or something, or a brain control, or just good outs like that, or Icarus attack for black wings, they can just clear your clear your oppressions, your all your other stuff, your uh, anti-spell fragrances for some reason, I don't know. Um, and then they can just, like, OTK you from there because they've built up all their synergy from from waiting and stalling from you, like, actually negating their stuff, and they don't want to go full out. Um, great places to get info 
for upcoming decks, new tips are uh, Pojo. Well, not Pojo as much anymore. Uh, Pojo, I guess I'll say. Shriek TCG for upcoming sets. Read up on new things. A lot of player and pro players do that. They read up on things. I know Jeff Jones had his Absolute Zero deck ready if it was legal in advance. Um, his is on DuelistGrounds.com. Um, That's a really good place you can go. Um, you can look at things that are potential to come back on the list. Like, honestly, a lot of people are arguing that this is not true, that my opinion is stupid and wrong. But honestly, I could see Psalm Judgment getting banned. I, I honestly think I'm about that. I mean, it's a Psalm Judgment. It pretty much negates anything. Like, it's like, it, it's that one card. Even at one, people can serve it so much that they can wait until they have that one explosive turn. Even if you activate, like, Threatening Roar or Mirror Force or whatever, they can just stop that. And it's just so overwhelming. Um, all these decks, they have, like, Glads. They can, uh, they can tag out, even though they're not as good with Psalm at one. I've seen that teched out version. It's just it gives new possibilities. I love innovative decks. Um, basically, keeping up with the meta is just no being part of the hottest decks. I know some people can't afford those decks. Um, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not trying to put anyone down. But uh, I mean, it, it. This is this game's really expensive. I'm not gonna lie. Like zombies, just to make a zombie deck. I mean, Mizuki's alone are going for like. 25 plus dollars on eBay. Plague is going for like 30 or so right now. Burials, the ultras are like more than the, the rares are just like 15 bucks now. Um, Black Wings are a kind of cheaper variant. The Armor Masters and Armed Wings, they're kind of expensive, but not that much. They're like 20 bucks or so, but they're not as much. The Dark Armed, yeah, but I mean, you can get the Gold or one. Chaos decks, um, they're okay. Um, but keeping up with the meta is knowing how to progress your deck, how to be innovative. Don't go out and net deck a deck. Like, a lot of the deck of, month, deck of the months that I've seen people do, I've seen other channels have the exact same build. As a matter of fact, one of the first contest entries I saw, um, I don't remember the exact name, but it was an exact, pretty much like there was one or two card differences, and he was saying the exact same stuff. Like, if he was like, as a matter of fact, like lip syncing or lip talking, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Channels, one of his deck of the months. I don't remember what. I'll probably have a link to it here or something. But it was basically so similar. Like, it was like one or two cards differences. And he was saying the exact same stuff. And that person's definitely not going to win the contest because I can tell that you copied it off of him. I'm pretty sure. And he subscribed to me. He's like his only subscription. And uh, he always talks good stuff about him, comments. That's fine. But yeah, being ready for the meta, be be, re be ready for upcoming decks. Um, know when to sell your cards, when to when to buy stuff when it's gonna be hot. Like I I always love burials. Like I always had barrels, but I had a feeling that zombies are gonna be hot because I knew the list like maybe two no two two a month maybe a month two months and like a week or two in advance before the actual list came out for this format. And I knew Mizuki was going up to two, so that means zombies were going to be hot. Burials, Bryanak I knew was coming out, even though they didn't really release it as much. It was originally supposed to be the SJC card, but they changed that up. Um, Kunami did the smart move on that. But yeah, I'm kind of extending this. I could talk forever about the meta, honestly. I'm probably, I am probably might even do a second part of Pro Player Part 5. Um, just being aware of your surroundings, of the meta itself... Pro players like to, or highly competitive players, I have to keep saying highly competitive because some people are just, they're they're ignorant and they don't like the word pro and stuff because they know there's no, there really is no such thing as pro. Lights weren't expensive, not as expensive as it was, but still, um, the judgments are like 50, 60 a pop. Um, zombies, still hot. Black wings, those, those are the pretty much the meta defining decks of this format. Next format, we, we're going to be able to see new variants of Gravekeepers, the Absolute Zero deck. Well, not abs I'm talking about later this format, when uh, Absolute Power Force comes out. But, uh, yeah, um, that's pretty much it, because I'm on my phone right now, like, using camera, so I can't talk and use as much time on it. Alex, you're on Inch 95's channel, bringing you guys Pro Player Part 5. Um, that was it, so peace, be aware of your meta, guys.